I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to look at nested track stacks. Now this is one of the features that's come in with the most recent Logic Update 10.7.5, and it's a really nice way of being able to extend the concept of what a track stack is. Remember, track stacks have existed in Logic for some time, and what they allow us to do is to group a whole bunch of sounds together. So we could take, for example, a whole series of drum sounds and put them together into a stack so that they can be treated together. Nested track stacks let us go one stage further. And before we find out exactly how that works and what they do, let's have a listen to the little track we'll be working on. Okay, so there's a couple of sort of playthroughs of a little beat loop that I've put together for one of the new kits that's also arrived with Logic 10.7.5, which is called Modular Mayhem. Now, this is a drum machine designer kit, and by default, what that basically means that it's a track stack because drum machine designer kits are track stacks. And to show you what I mean, if I click the little arrow here on the left-hand side of this track, we can see all of the individual kit pieces which have been organized into this track stack or drum mix. And when I press play, we can see how the individual kit pieces are triggered on their own tracks. So we're seeing activity there for the kick and for one of the snares and the toms as well. So what exactly do nested track stacks allow us to do? Well, to understand that, firstly, let's look at what a track stack does. If I can see this main track up here, and if we just close this window down a little bit, we can see that obviously effectively what I've got is this one track from which everything else is being triggered. And any of the effects that either are active within this track stack or that I choose to enable by turning on the power buttons effectively mean that these effects are going to be applied to all of the sounds within the drum mix. And the reason for that becomes clear if we open up the mixer. So again, if I open up this little arrow here so we can see all of the individual um, sort of tracks within this track stack, we can see that every single part of the drum mix, whether that's the kicks or the snares or the toms, which are over here in green on the right hand side, have individual track elements. So in other words, insert effects, which can be enabled for each individual kit piece, but they're all being routed through to bus number four, which means that at bus number four, which is this actual uh, modular mayhem track itself, effectively all of those sounds get folded down to that point and any effects that we add here can be therefore applied to every single sound within the mix, which is fine until what we want to do is to take a collection of sounds within the drum mix and take it on another step. I'm going to show you what I mean. What I want to do is to take the toms within this drum mix, which are effectively these little pitched elements. And what I want to do is to treat those together with a separate set of controls to the rest of the kit. Now, because there are three toms, I could, I suppose, set up, let's say, a compressor on one of those toms and copy it to all three instruments. But it would make more sense for me to group those toms together as one separate kit collection of sounds and process them together. In other words, they need their own track stack. So what I'm going to do is to close down the mixer and go and find these toms which are here. And what I'm going to do is to create a new track stack by pressing control and coming down to create track stack. And immediately I'm given exactly the same options that I would be if I was creating a track stack from scratch. I'm going to select the summing stack option and I'm going to press create. And what I can now see is that the track stack, which is the whole drum mix, has now got this new stack in the middle, which I'm going to call toms. And what that means is that these three sounds now have the capability to be um, processed as a group here. So what I'm going to do is to select this new track stack element, the toms that are here. I'm going to come down to the compressor from the dynamics folder. And what I'm then going to do is to come and find a nice vintage opto style um, processing uh, sort of option. I'm going to turn off auto gain, drop the threshold, increase the ratio. I'm going to push these toms quite hard by boosting their makeup gain. Now, of course, if I select the solo option, we're only going to hear the toms, which means that I can set the compression parameters exactly as I want them to be before we then reintroduce them to the main track stack. So 
So suddenly these toms have got much more prominence within the overall drum mix. Now, to be clear, if I was just selecting the rim shot that's part of this loop, which is just on its own individual track, there would be no point me creating this nested track stack option. It's just one element of the mix, so I can go and find its individual channel, apply a compressor there, let's say, or change its EQ, and I can do that processing just on that individual track. The reason why nested track stacks make sense is if you want to put together a collection of sounds within an overall drum mix. So because there are three toms, this makes life much quicker for me because I've got three separate sounds which I can process in this way. So effectively we've got a stack within a stack and immediately that means that I've got all of this processing capability available to me. Now there's just one thing I need to be a little bit careful about, which is what happens if I decide that I don't actually need this nested track stack and I want to just go back to my regular drum machine designer stack that I started with in the first place. Well, like all track stacks, I can come to the one that I've created and I can flatten the stack and we're back to where we started. Or are we? Actually, if I come back to the mixer, what I'm going to discover is that these three toms are still being routed to a new bus, the bus that was created when I created the nested track stack. So I need to be careful. If I really want these sounds to go back to being part of the main drum mix, I need to put them back on the same output routing as the other tracks within the stack, which is bus number four. And now they're effectively going to be governed and managed by the same track stack that they were when we first created it. And this new little Tom's bus that was created over here on the right hand side, well, I don't need that anymore, so I can throw that away. And now I really am back to where I started. So nested track stacks are great for any group of sounds that you might want to process. So for instance, you could also apply this to groups of backing vocals, let's say when you've got a whole collection of individual sounds and you want to take a few of them and process them in some way that's different from the rest. Or maybe that would might be true with a whole group of synths that you've put together to create some enormous kind of pad sound or a sort of a lead that's come from a number of different elements. If you've got a track stack and you want to take a couple of things within that and process those together, nested track stacks are a really nice way of doing it.